For more physics related videos, please subscribe. Graham Hancock is a writer whose claim to fame are his alternate views regarding ancient history. Now, I'm not going to discuss his views on ancient history in this video because I'm not a historian or an archaeologist, but I am a physicist, and I came across a video of his where he was discussing how the Great Pyramid of Giza was built, where he made a rather strange claim regarding the laws of physics. These 70-ton granite beams have been elevated to a height of more than 350 feet above the ground and carefully and precisely uh, placed in position. You can say, oh, perhaps they built a ramp and, and, and hauled the stones up the ramp. But then you have to confront basic laws of physics. You can't haul a, a stone weighing tens of tons up a slope that exceeds 10 degrees. Wait, what? Why not? What law of physics says that? I mean, I don't know every single thing about physics there is to know. But as far as I know, there is absolutely no law of physics that says you cannot raise heavy stones at an angle of greater than 10 degrees. This is a very strange claim. I mean, sliding heavy blocks on ramps is literally one of the first things you're going to learn in any introductory physics course, whether it be in high school or college. Now, I'm not going to criticize Graham Hancock because he doesn't know his basic physics. He's not a physicist, so I can't expect him to remember everything from his high school physics course. But if he's going to make a claim regarding what is possible according to laws of physics, he better at least be able to pass the first semester of high school physics. I mean, this claim is very perplexing. Where on earth did this 10 degree law come from? Did he just make this up? Trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, the best I can think of is that maybe somewhere he read that given the materials and the capabilities of the Egyptians, they would not have been able to haul such a heavy stone up an angle greater than 10 degrees. But that's not the claim he's making here. He's not making a claim about the Egyptians' abilities. He's making a claim about the laws of physics. I mean, this problem here has a ramp of 30 degrees. So according to Hancock, whatever physics teacher wrote this problem is unaware that it's actually physically impossible. It violates the laws of physics. Hasn't Graham ever seen a crane? Now, I'm not claiming the Egyptians used crane to build the pyramids, but remember, this is a claim regarding the laws of physics, not the technology available to the Egyptians. And cranes lift very heavy objects at angles of 90 degrees, vertically. So this is well above this 10 degree limit. What does he actually think when he sees cranes lifting extremely heavy objects straight up off the ground? Is he flabbergasted that the laws of physics have been violated? Maybe we should let him elaborate. And now would be as good of a time as any to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Then you start doing the calculation. How long a ramp do I need with a 10 degree slope to get to 350 feet above the ground? Mm -hmm. And the answer is you need a fucking Tusty. long ramp. <laughs> now that's definitely true. If you're limited to this 10 degree rule and you want to build a ramp with a height of 350 feet, that's going to be an extremely long ramp. Which should still be there, yeah. because not a, it couldn't have been a sand ramp. It would have collapsed under the weight of those stones. It had to be as massive as the pyramid itself. Again, I'm going to have to disagree with him on both these points. Why couldn't it be made of sand? If it's built properly, compacted sand can hold extremely heavy objects. I mean, maybe I'm missing something here. So if there's a structural engineer out there, let me know if I'm wrong. And why would it still be there? Hasn't Graham ever seen large structures being built? There's all sorts of temporary structures around it there just to help the builders. Once the building's completed, they remove the temporary structures. Okay, so he's claimed incorrectly that the laws of physics don't allow for this ramp theory to build the Great Pyramid. Well, how does he think the pyramid was built then? Maybe the idea that they regard as absurd, namely that psychic powers were cultivated by ancient civilizations, that they could use powers of the human mind that we have allowed to lapse. What? We hear anecdotal reports of people who have telekinetic powers, who can move things with their minds, of people who have telepathic powers. And our automatic reaction is to just dismiss all of that because science says it's impossible. But you just dismissed the ramp theory on the basis that science said it was impossible, even though it doesn't say that. So I don't understand here. You started off by refuting a theory on the basis that science said it was impossible. And now you're saying, wait, what are you saying? 
they're not open to the possibility that there are whole other kinds of technology that could be used. Right. I always go back to the ancient Egyptian traditions that speak of priests chanting as these huge blocks were lifted into the air. Were they using some kind of sound uh, effect, some kind of, so, some kind of use of sound? So chanting while they work, you mean like this? I mean, I'm not going to disagree that there's power in singing and chanting while doing hard physical labor, but that's for psychological morale. The chanting doesn't actually do the work for you. The notion that we could lift huge blocks with sound seems absurd to archaeologists. Yes, because it is. I'm glad to hear that the archaeologists are on the side of physics. Hats off to the archaeologist on this one. But Hancock's claim here is really confusing. He's clearly started off by appealing to the laws of physics. Okay, so he's incorrect about what those laws are, but he clearly believes that whatever method was used to build the pyramid, they have to agree with the laws of physics. So then he goes on to suggest that these 60-ton stones were lifted using magical sound waves? Well, lifting 60-ton stones with sound violates numerous laws of physics. So I don't understand, does he require a method that agrees with the laws of physics or not? And his technology claim is rather strange. Technology does not allow you to circumvent the laws of physics or the laws of nature. Technology works 100% in accordance with the laws of nature. Technology is the consequence of a good understanding of the laws of nature and then using them to your advantage. But you're never breaking the laws of nature with technology. And in the case of special sound waves and special frequencies that allow you to lift rocks, that would be an evolved trait, not technology. So we should, for one, see it in other animals. And given the enormous number of people on the planet and how often we talk and utter things with our vocal cords, we should once in a while see someone by accident hitting this magical frequency or this magical sound and then inadvertently lifting heavy things. But this claim is even more bizarre because we actually have a painting from ancient Egypt where they show us how they transported extremely heavy rock structures. In this case, they're transporting a very large rock statue of what I assume is a pharaoh. And in order to move it, they've got about 100 people dragging it along the sand with someone pouring water in front of this sled, presumably because they figured out it slides better on wet sand. So the coefficient of kinetic friction must be lower for wet sand. So now this brings up a whole nother question. If Hancock believes that they use telekinetic powers, why aren't they using it here? Sometimes they use these special sound frequencies, and other times they decide, well, we could just move it with our special chance, but we're going to use intense physical labor instead. This reminds me of these fantasy movies where there's some extremely powerful druid who has all sorts of magic, but despite everyone else in the movie being stuck in what is typically a middle-aged type existence with middle-aged technology and middle-aged medicine, he refuses to use it on the basis that it's too dangerous for some reason or it's too risky given the consequences. So for the entire movie, everyone is suffering immensely, dying left and right, no medication, no way of healing themselves, and then for some reason at the end of the movie, he uses his powers and saves the day, and there's never any consequences. And you're left asking, well, why didn't you just do that from the beginning and avoid all this suffering? Apparently, this is how the ancient Egyptians operated as well. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you'd like to see more physics videos in the future, click the notification bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.